In the 19th century, with uh, Maxwell's synthesis of the laws of electricity and magnetism, uh, physicists started to realize that what we perceive as light is deeply understood as a kind of disturbance in electric and magnetic fields. Uh, that gave us a new concept of the possibilities of perception of light uh, that show us that we're missing a lot. The electromagnetic equations permit radiation of any uh, wavelength and of any frequency. What we perceive as color, or we, what we perceive as, as light, uh, is, corresponds to a very narrow band of frequencies out of a, an infinite continuum. Not only that, but even within that band, we take three averages. We don't sample all the different frequencies, but just three averages. Uh, that's called trichromatic vision. So, for instance, in computer displays, uh, there are three different kinds of lighting elements used. When you see uh, on your menu the choice of millions of different colors, that doesn't mean different uh, lighting arrangements and uh, lighting uh, possibilities. It means different combinations, different relative intensities of just three. Any perceived color can be synthesized from three basic colors. Other creatures see less. Dogs, for instance, see only two kinds of colors. Uh, like colorblind people see basically only two kinds of colors. Other creatures see more. Other creatures, uh, many insects and birds see four or five colors. They also sample kinds of light, kinds of electromagnetic radiation that humans don't see. There's infrared radiation, there's ultraviolet radiation. Uh, Maxwell's equations, which describe light, also describe radio waves and microwaves and x-rays and gamma rays. So all those things are possible forms of vision that uh, human natural endowment doesn't tap into, but it's out there. On the one hand, it's very important to make concepts visual because it taps into very powerful methods of processing that we have. And on the other hand, uh, scientific knowledge of what light is shows us that our natural perception leaves a lot on the table and so leaves us with the program of doing better with telescopes, microscopes, spectrometers, and other kinds of gadgets that I'm developing for everyday life that will allow us to see uh, more colors. The human perception of color is limited really by the principles of quantum mechanics. It's interesting to compare the human perception of color to the perception of sound. Uh, our perception of sound in one way is much richer. When you have two pure tones together, like a C and a G, a simple chord, that's a, that's a fifth, uh, if you hear that, you can hear the separate tones, uh, even though they're played together, and you hear a chord, you can also sense the separate tones and uh, if one is louder than the other, you can, uh, you can continuously uh, judge how their, their relative intensity. Whereas with colors, if you mix two different, if you have two different colors, uh, say spectral uh, green and spectral red, and mix them, what you see is not a chord where you, where you can see the distinct identities uh, preserved, but rather an intermediate color. In fact, you'll see something like that looks like yellow. The perception of color sort of throws away uh, the detailed resolution, a detailed uh, accounting of the different kinds of underlying tones, different kinds of pure, pure frequencies or pure colors that uh, are, are underlying the perception. Our perception of that kind of mixture is indistinguishable from our dis perception of a pure spectral yellow, such as you'd see in a rainbow. It's as if in music, when you play a C and a G together, instead of hearing a chord, you just heard the note E, an interme the intermediate note. 
On the other hand, visual information is much richer uh, in conveying the spatial structure of things. We get a detailed image, whereas sound gives much poorer uh, spatial resolution. And there are good physical reasons for those things. Sound waves are relatively slow, rel oscillate relatively slowly, so that mechanical vibrations inside our ear and electrical processes inside our brain can keep up with them. And so we can keep that kind of time structure. We can keep track of it. That's why we do a good job with chords. Whereas the oscillations in electromagnetic radiation are very, very fast, much faster than any mechanical system can keep up with, or than our um, uh, nerve firings can keep up with. So uh, the way we process that is quite different. It's an all or none process where photons get absorbed and trigger changes in the structure of proteins. And we have three kinds of proteins in three different kinds of cone cells that give us three kinds of average responses. And that's why you can synthesize any perceived color with just three. Mm -hmm.